Mr. Speaker, food bank usage in Canada has reached record highs. According to Second Harvest, a not-for-profit organization, food bank usage is expected to serve 60 percent more people per month this year in comparison to 2022. It's not only low-income people who are struggling. Many of those accessing the food banks are employed. Dalhousie University's food price report stated food inflation exceeded 10.3 percent in 2022. Unfortunately, we are halfway through 2023 and it does not look any better as these prices for fruits and vegetables are continuing to rise 7% with no uh, end in sight. Consequently, it is up to harder for Canadians to meet their nutritional goals and properly nourish their families. Whether you're buying for your own table or donating to the food bank for the millions of Canadians who rely on it, it is getting more difficult to keep up with the cost of groceries. These Liberal policies have evidently made life harder for everyone, regardless of income. It is imperative that the government reverse the inflationary spending and give Canadian families a break. Here, here. After eight years of this government, Canadian farmers are literally paying for the Liberals' carbon tax failures. Canadian farmers will pay $150,000 a year in carbon taxes alone, but the Liberals haven't hit a single emissions target. So what's better than making farmers pay for one failed carbon tax? How about two? On July 1st, the Liberals are introducing a second carbon tax. will increase the price of feed, fuel and fertilizer, which will also drive up the cost of food at the grocery store. With more than 8 million Canadians already relying on a food bank every single month, my question to the government is how many farmers are going to go bankrupt, how many Canadians will go hungry paying for another failed carbon tax? The Honourable Minister for Agriculture. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Once again, my colleague is twisting the facts. He's talking about a typical farm of 5,000 acres, but the average farm in Canada is 809 acres. And he is assuming that agriculture producers will do nothing to reduce emissions, but they're working very hard on that. They're among the first to try to adopt good practices, new technology, get the information, and we're helping them with 1.5 billion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The minister isn't denying that Canadian farmers are being punished with two carbon taxes. And in fact, they're face facing the highest inflation rates in 40 years. And nowhere is that more acute with the price of food, which is already up 10%. But rather than offering support for Canadians, the Liberals are doubling down with a second carbon tax. What that will do is we are seeing forecasts that food prices will go up another 34 percent over the next two years, adding another $5,000 to Canadians' annual food, food costs. Again, to the government, when they introduce a second carbon tax, how many farmers will go broke and how many Canadians will go hungry? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. If the, if the member from across would really like to talk about the clean fuel regulations, let's talk about that. It's kind of interesting because Alberta itself has clean fuel regulations. And what does it do? It actually incents like, cleaner fuels, but it also works to support emerging industries like biofuels, which I think are quite popular in his part of the country as well. What we are doing, it's not just a regulation, there are incentives and there are supports to make sure that we have an all-encompassing program. It's not only going to reduce emissions, but it's also going to create new industries and new renewable fuels that are so important for our future. The Honourable Ren Member for Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. Mr. Speaker, it's official Liberal policy to make energy more expensive. It takes energy to manufacture fertilizer. It takes energy to ship fertilizer to uh, the farmers. It takes energy to spread fertilizer. It takes energy to harvest crops. It takes energy to ship crops to processors. It takes energy to process crops into food. It takes energy to ship the food to stores. Why doesn't the Prime Minister understand that higher energy prices lead to higher food prices and forcing Canadians to go hungry? The Honourable Agriculture Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. When the, with the Clean Technology Program, that's 500 million of investment in clean technology. One of the newest innovations that can be deployed across country is using manure as energy, and there's a lot of potential for that. We will continue to support agriculture in these ways. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Bose. 
Mr. Speaker, the government has no plan to make food more affordable. The multiple carbon taxes and the tariff on fertilizers have only increased the price of food from farm to table. The cost of production in Canada continues to rise and farmers have been utterly abandoned by this government. As we saw in the last budget, less than 1% of the budget was allocated to agriculture. The Liberals are overlooking a major economic driver. When will the government take real action to support farmers and to make production more affordable? The Honourable Agriculture Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think my colleague should perhaps look at the history of what the last Conservative government did. They cut hundreds of millions in risk management programs. They cut hundreds of millions in research and innovation. Mr. Speaker, our government has invested. We increased by 500 million the Sustainable Agriculture Partnership. We have invested in clean tech, clean practices, and research and innovation to help agriculture be more resilient. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.